at all times. Any unattended baggage will be removed and may be destroyed by security services. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Mind the gap. Well, good evening everybody. Welcome to this Dad Rail live stream. Starting at the slightly later, later time of 20.45 tonight. Uh, just to avoid any confusion, 20.45 uh, real time. Um, it's still 20.30 by the station clock on your screen now. So 20.30... It cut me off halfway through. Yeah, 20.30 by the station clock that's on the screen now, 20.45 um, real time. So, see you all soon.
once again, ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting in just a couple of minutes' time. Please have your drinks and light refreshments ready and remain seated throughout the entire stream, starting in about two and a half minutes. is a safety announcement. It is not permitted to cycle, skateboard, or rollerblade within the station building.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this late running. No, it's not late running. It's on time because we're railway workers. It's an on time Dad Rail stream. Slightly on time, almost on time. Today we're doing the Great Western Express route, and we have a very special guest with us in the chat. There's been a lot of speculation on the Discord as to who it is. So I'm going to press this button here and say hello, special guest. Hello, and good evening. <laughs> Hopefully that is working, guys. I might need to play around with volume levels. Does anybody know who that is? We have to, we have to wait for the chat to catch up now because it's like I said, it's twenty seconds behind. Say something again, special guest. Hello and good evening, and welcome to Dad Rail's special. Sujat says, do you have a tan? L little bit of a tan. <laughs> hey, 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 I think they can hear you. I think they can hear you. Train spotted from Berkshire. Berkshire, 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 Berkshire. Depends if you're posh or not, I guess. <laughs> it's Sam, they can all hear you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have got the legend that is Sam in the stream with us. Discord moderator, Discord booster. All-round top guy. He is here to um, part some wisdom on the Great Western Express route because he knows a lot more about it than I do. I hope. <laughs> I just think I do, but we'll find out, I suppose. So that, those of you who don't know Sam, um, he is a passenger driver for a um, company that may or may not operate trains uh, on the Great Western route. And I will put this on the screen as I always do. All the opinions expressed within this video are solely my own, blah de blah de blah. May not reflect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with, and I'm sure exactly the same applies to uh, Sam as well. Okay, guys. So, I'm a bit all over the place today, as you can tell. <laughs> We're going to be having all the usual features in the stream tonight. We're going to be jumping in and out of the Discord server which is on the screen there. And we're also going to be playing our very popular game. Let's play Locomotive Livery Location. Do not post numbers yet. No, it's not your cue to post numbers. Uh, we've got two pictures lined up for you today. One by travel 15 a and your second picture is by Daniels Trains UK. I think they're going to be challenging today, but I always think they're going to be challenging, and they never are. So uh, we shall see how we get on. Don't forget, if you haven't already, guys, 66 of you lovely people in, please do like and subscribe. That would be absolutely awesome. So I'm going to jump into the game, Sam's going to route conduct me a little bit and um, we'll see if we can't answer some of your questions as we go along. Let's find the right button, there we go. Can you see that on your screen Sam? Yes. Perfect. Right, if the game audio or whatever is too loud guys and you can't hear Sam, do let me know and I can um, fiddle about with bits at my end and, and try and get it uh, kind of set up. Okay, so what I had in mind was we'll do an HST run out to Reading and then we'll jump in a turbo because everyone loves a turbo and we'll take that back to Paddington. I've not got much experience on this route at all. I, I sign Acton Yard. That's, that's the limit of my route knowledge on this route. Uh, let's do something short. Um, London Paddington to Bristol Temple Meads. 26 minute run. There we go. Loading. It's all gone quiet. There we go. <laughs> Gameplay car washes Lego and more. Love your stream. Thank you very much, bud. Much appreciated. Right, how much do you know about HST, Sam? I know pretty much nothing. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm a qualified HST driver. And you're route conducting me. <laughs> Johnny good. <laughs> um, I think once once you can... Uh, is, is it fair to say that if you kind of know the basics of train operation, then they're pretty much all the same? Would you say that was a fair comment? Pretty much all the same. The only thing that I do know about the HST is that you cannot set the DRA on the move because it gives you an emergency brake application. Well, should we check if that's simulated? <laughs> 
do. That's the only thing I know about them. I don't know why I know that useless bit of information, but that is all I know about an HST is that you can't set the DRA on the move. <laughs> I am. I'm looking for the AWS. I'm guessing. Hey. There we go. Right. Stop at location Reading. So it doesn't even want me to open the doors. It just wants me to go. And I believe the Great Western Route has just had an update from Dovetail Games as well. And this HST has been updated by the looks of it. Very nice it looks too. I have something really funky going on with the, the, the lighting on the side of the um, trains. They, it seems to kind of want to flicker and um, bits and bobs. But let's get going. I think this, this route is based, is it about 10 years ago? I believe it's based pre-2015. Um, they've got half the wires sort of as far as sort of Maidenhead-ish. Um, and then it sort of runs out. So, um, yeah, I think it's about 2015 because the Electrostars came in in 2017, if the top mad. Okay, we'll go with that. And the routes, obviously, I should imagine, changed quite a lot since then with all the Crossrail stuff. Um, Purple Train, Elizabeth Line. No, we're calling it Crossrail. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I should imagine it's, it's it changed. It's, it's changed a little bit. More sort of running speeds in and out of uh, Paddington and things like that have changed slightly. Uh, apart from that, it's normally only platform lengths that have changed at uh, some of the bigger stations to facilitate 12 cars for the um, 3, 387 runnings. And I should imagine all the dive under around Acton and everything, that's um, new. Yes, yes, that's new. And I believe that was for Crossrail. Um, not, not that we believe that, but hey. Uh, Laserjet, the route is based in 2015. Rafe the train spotter, the lights are not on. So what will normally happen if I don't turn my lights on is you'll leave a terminal station and there'll be a driver coming the other way tapping their head. Um, which is universal train driver sign language for headlights. Um, second that. <laughs> do train drivers forget to turn their headlights on often? No, never. It doesn't happen. Um, I think that's the one I want. There we go. Okay, so what are we doing speed-wise? 40. Do you, do you reckon I can turn the HUD off and, and you can successfully conduct me and we can get a gold medal? Sam? Yes, yeah, you, 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 you can turn the HUD off if you desire. Um, right. I should know all the speeds on the main lines. The HUD is gone. <laughs> Jolly good. Well, it's, it's 40 for a bit. It's 40 so you, for you're a 40 bit. till, uh, yeah. We'll go with that then. Right, 40, 40 for a bit. 40 for a bit. Yeah, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get close to the gantry where Labrick Grove is, and that's when the speed goes up to 50. Is the speed on the um, fast considerably different to the, the slow lines? Uh, it's 90 on the reliefs and 125 on the mains, with a couple of exceptions on the relief through Slough and Maidenhead, which is 75. Ah, uh, of course, because on the Great Western you have this, um, I would say habit, because everywhere's different, of course, but you don't call them the slows and the fast, you call them the main and the relief. We do call it the main of the relief, yes. I believe up in up parts in northern England they, they have the, the main and the local. But we're where I am down in the southeast we just have fast and slows because we're we're all a bit simple down here. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> right, so as I'm as you're an HST, probably when you get under this bridge here, which I can't remember the name of, or the next magnet for the signal, you can probably start increasing your speed to 50 as you're passing Sierra November 107 signal. 107? You've got a route map in front of you, you must have. Haven't. Promise. The, the, the tablet's turned off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only know that one because line 3 is Sierra November 109, which uh, has a history from 1997. Ah, that's fair enough. Something people ask me quite a lot is, do we have to know the numbers of all the signals? And I say, absolutely not. <laughs> that would be... Um, my, my brain will not cope with that. <laughs> you do kind of get to know, the ones you set up the radio on and the ones you get stopped at all the time, you get to know those uh, pretty quickly. When you get a, um, please explain, and they want to know why you were late and you need to put signal numbers down. Uh, 156 Andrew says, Sam, do you like HSTs? Um, I, I don't mind them. Um, I actually prefer the uh, the IETs just from my own comfort because I've got a knackered back, so I find the seats are a lot more comfortable. 
Um, but yeah, I've had many journeys on HSTs in the past and uh, I don't really hold an opinion on them, to be honest. I, I would say you're probably in the min minority. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I probably definitely am. Um, actually, while we're going past North Pole Depot, which is to your left there, the line speed has increased to 100. Oh, off we go. Uh, and I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that your back end will be clear now. So I know the bridge that we're just going under now. That's Mitre Bridge. Yes. Um, I signed that bit of route. So I, I know that bit on the uh, the West London line. Ah, that's where it goes. <laughs> Yes, uh, well, straight up, if you carry on straight, it'll take you on to West London Junction and the West Coast Main Line, or you can swing a left and it'll take you to Wilston Junction High Level. Uh, or if you go to the, as you were approaching it there, if you go to the left, it runs down to Kensington and Clapham Junction. Quite well connected there, then. Absolutely. So th this is Old Oak Common we're going past now. Old Oak Common is to the right, which no longer exists. There is literally nothing there apart from the Crossrail Depot and the old Great Western Depot has been completely demolished now to make way for the new um, HS2 station that they're building there. Any thoughts on HS2? Good idea. If it takes, uh, if it, you know, if it gets more people out the cars and it will improve the journey times, it's a shame that it keeps getting uh, pinned back and more and more sections of it further north being curtailed, which is sort of a bit pointless really, but... Uh, Hey, I think it's a very good idea. I think one of the things I would like to have seen with HS2 is a, is a connection to HS1, um, so you can run international trains all the way through. But Absolutely. Yeah. You know, if you want, if you want to kind of compete with with air travel, um, conflict of interest there for you, I know. <laughs> if you want to compete with air travel, then you need you need decent international connections. You do, and sadly, the the, the way they keep cutting it back, it's not going to happen. So I know where we are now. That's uh, Acton Yard. Acton Yard indeed, and you're coming up to Acton West Junction, which is a 70 mile an hour crossover from the Reliefs to the Main. We, we have no Lunars, no Feathers. Do you, do you call them Lunars on the Great Western or Feathers for route indicators? Um, I call them a Feather. I've heard them described as all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> those, those white light thingies that mean you have to slow down. Pointy thing is that means that I should know where I'm going. Where half the time I'm sort of panicking, thinking I don't. <laughs> that never happens. <laughs> no, of course not. No, no, no. Did you say we were good for a hundred, sir? Uh, you are actually now good for a hundred and twenty-five. A hundred and twenty. As the back end, as the back end passes Acton West, the speed does go up to one two five, and you are now one two five. It's about a mile and a half out of Reading. For some reason, quite an easy route. <laughs> Quite an easy, easy route to conduct on this one, the fast one. The, um, for some reason my frame rate has been absolutely hammered by this route today. I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, hopefully it doesn't look too bad in the stream. The, the stream looks alright, because uh, I've got it in a tiny player on the side, and yes, yeah, uh, it looks alright for me. Northern Princess Productions, um, was the pun intended? Are you acting on Sam's instructions? Please tell me the pun was intended, because if, I mean... If, that, if that's a spell check issue, that's that's pretty epic. <laughs> wow, we're catching up with a, a turbo. So I, I'm guessing the line still is still fitted with um, ATP. Relief is not only the main. Only the main. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, I'm not signed to drive ATP. So um, I believe it is only the main lines, uh, with certain bits of it maybe. I'd have to check the maps. I, don't, I believe that goes, is it as far as Swindon that goes down? Or is it even, maybe even further than that? It goes, I think it goes all the way to Bristol. Um, I know it ends at Newbury for um, the Barks and Hands line. Um, I think it does go all the way to Bristol. I think it was Bristol's Emblem Eads to Paddington that they fitted. So I, I have literally zero knowledge of APT from, from well, I say zero knowledge, I have, I have a little bit. Um, these kind of green dots around the speedo light up, don't they, to sort of tell you what speed you should be doing. And then yes, having having seen, having had been in the front of some where they've been driving them on INTs, yet yeah, they beep and tell you what speed to drive at. And if you're not slowing down fast enough, it will intervene with the brakes and slow you down to the the light that's flashing and there's release speeds and some other bits and pieces which quite frankly I, I, I would get confused with. 
So we stick to the AP, uh, AWS TPWS arrangement. Sounds good to me. It works well. It's primitive, but it works well. That's it. Uh, Laserjet ATP Advanced Train Protection. Northern Princess pun very very much intended. Okay, guys, let's press a button. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. We'll play a game. Oh, why is it when I jump out of the cab the AWS goes off? So, why am I cancelling the AWS? That is the AWS for 70 mile an hour restriction for airport junction that's coming up after Hayes and Harlington. Uh, that will Although apply. nowadays it doesn't go off because it's route set. So, will that 70 apply to me? No, it will not. No, okay. it will. Uh, there, there are a couple of dodgy magnets down this route, and I can't remember where they are because I've not played it for a long time. <laughs> But yeah, you've got the diverging junction here, uh, coming off to the left and also to the right. That's uh, that's airport junctions. So that's the the branch line down to airport to Heathrow. Uh, Alex wants to hear the horn. Beautiful. A little bit of dodginess on the sound there. Uh, who have we got? Right, Ed C. You are the third one on my screen with number five. Let's play. Locomotive delivery location. As we go under airport junction, let's reveal box number five. And then you've got ten seconds. That's not giving much away. <laughs> and I guess that it's a train. Um, yeah, you, 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 can, you can guess that. <laughs> I always, get, I, I'm always very, very impressed with how quickly people in the chat get them. Um, I mean, I sort of think, oh, that's really hard, and then someone just goes, oh, yeah, that's what it is. So I need to make sure my speed doesn't creep up too high. Yes, please don't, because I can't see that on my screen, because it is very <laughs> small. <laughs> 125, one, no more. 125. <laughs> no less, no more. <laughs> Do you find that the, the timings that you work to are pretty tight with speeds? Um, I mean, I know you don't drive the, the fast trains, but are, are they sort of allow you to run at lower speeds, or is it sort of timetable 125, you need to be doing 125? Some of them. Um, so, some of the stuff that we work, because I, I don't work the, the high speed stuff, because oh, I'm only allowed to do 110, but some of those you can. Um, you, you can be a bit more relaxed with it, especially if you know you're following one that stops at Slough, for example. Yeah. Um, you tend to take it a bit easy until you get past Slough and you see that you've got greens through Slough and you know that that's well out of the way in front of you so you can uh, get it back up to speed there. As whereas other times you, you've literally got 24 minutes, which I think is a minute and a half slower than a IET's timetable for. And that's that's pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a nosebleed if I do more than 75, so 110 is like unheard of. <laughs> But the trouble is with driving freight trains, you know, we get stuck behind passenger trains all the time. Yeah, and we get stuck behind freights, but at least you keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, really, because you, you kind of start realising the average speed of an all-stations passenger train is about 40 miles an hour, if that in some places. If, if that, yeah, I tend to do 30 leaving Paddington, just because I catch a crossrail up that gets out the way at Hayes, so uh, there's no point thrashing it. You may get a magnet coming up for a 40 mile an hour. The Dolphin Junction um, may may be simulated. I don't know. Dolphin Junction. Yes, Dolphin Junction. Yes, it's the name of the old pub that used to be next to it. Uh, there are there are many uh, railway junctions named after pubs. Oh yes. The, the the junction closest to me is called Bo Peep Junction and Bo Peep Tunnel, um, and that's named after the Bo Peep Inn, which was the only building in the area when the line was built, apparently. Ah. And that's my local, and I've never been in there. I, I, I must change that. Yeah, yeah, you should pop down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've just gone past Dolphin Junction, and I see the magnet's gone off for something else, so that's going to be for Slough West, which is also 40 miles an hour, which is the other side of Slough Station. But I'm 125 all the way through. You are 125 all the way through. Bouncing around quite nicely. So yeah, it simulates the uh, smooth ride that we have on the, uh, on the Great Western <laughs> quite well. I think I've only been to Slough. I've only been to Slough Station once, and that was on the London Transport Race Challenge. Terribly sorry. <laughs> I think I've been to Slough itself maybe twice. Um, 
for varying reasons. Very good Tesco next to the station. Uh, that's where I've been twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we stayed in a hotel um, last year, year before. We went to Legoland. We stayed in a hotel and we ended up in Tesco's in Slough for some reason. These things happen. <laughs> it was an interesting experience. That, that's that's what I say when I go to Windsor eight times in a day. Oh, I've never been to Windsor. Is it, is it as beautiful as they say? No, no, only ever seen the platform. <laughs> Always looks nice. There's two routes to Windsor, isn't it? The Great Western route and the South Western route. Yes, there is. And the number of people that get those stations confused is quite high. I would probably be one of them. I want to say Windsor and Eton Riverside is the South Western. Correct. Hey. Is that the one that's right next door to the castle? No, that's that's central. That's the one I go to. Ah. Because we get, we get a beautiful view of it. Is that the one the Royal Train inevitably goes into on rare occasions? I doubt that it fits, so I don't think so. That probably goes to Riverside. Uh, Will Wood, at Dad Rao, do you like Jeff Marshall? Um, I've only met Jeff once and he seemed like a pleasant chap. Windsor and Eaton is nice as GJ Barnard. Okay, right. I've completely missed your guesses because I've been chatting away. Um, Maxwell Wynn said, is it a 91? Pep EMU fan, 321. Officially Charles 700, 1560, 365. Thomas, class 321. Johnny Simulated Gamer thinks it's a DLR tray. Uh, Trace from Barksy, 225 Electra. Uh, GJ Barnard thinks it might be DLR as well. Actually, give him, let's give him another one. Let's play a game. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. Mark the Sarcastic Law Student says, I always love... What a great name. I always love pulling into Reading on this route and setting off the TPWS. I, I believe the TPWS at Reading is the only one on Train Sim World that actually works. Um, which is a bit of a shame because I, I would like to see it modelled throughout and I don't think that would be a, a huge job to do. BBE managed to do it all those years ago. Um, you know, I, I think it would add quite a bit to the game, really, if you've got all the safety systems turned on. I personally, if you had the graphics of Train Sim World with the the gameplay and physics of BVE, you'd have the perfect train simulator. Absolutely. I, I, I still think, and I, I've said it before, and I say it again, physics-wise and gameplay-wise and simulation-wise, BVE is still the best. <laughs> it, it just feels real. It does, I, yeah. I, I remember playing BVE for, for many a time when I was growing up, when I was younger and absolutely loved it and doing all the funny things that you could do with BVE and then finding out what upsets the train and what doesn't and then find that you've TPWS. <laughs> <laughs> when you approach one of the junctions too quickly or the speed restriction too quickly and it fires you off so, ah. but it's when you it's when you, I used to, you know you're coming up to it a bit too quickly you should just start hitting the TPWS uh, isolate button as you approach the restriction don't do that in real life by the way <laughs> <laughs> no 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 never reset and go <laughs> Okay, who have we got on the screen? Sloth the Joltian, number eight. You're the third one on my screen. Let's, Let's play. play Locomotive Delivery Location. Ten seconds. There's quite a lot to go on in that one. I think I might have cheated a little bit with this picture. It might be kind of pushing the um, the parameters of the game. Oh, we're past Maidenhead already. That shows how much attention I paid. Um, <laughs> you may get a 70 warning coming up. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry about it. <laughs> Sam Oliver, class 399, Jolly Simulator Gaming, 321, officially charged 700 at Gatwick. Sam Oliver, tram train. GJ Barnard, it is a DLR. DLR, no clue on the station. LWR West England trains, I think I know. A lot of love for DLR. Talking of BVE, there used to be a DLR route for BVE, which is quite interesting. 
the only route I had for uh, BBE was that um, fake looking Birmingham one that I can't remember the life of me was called because it was massive. Uh, you have the Cross City South and there was the Network West Midlands route. That's it, the Network West Midlands route. That's uh, the one. Maybank to Hammerwich, I think it was, or something like that. Fiction. Something something like that, yeah. Uh, then it I had... remember I printed the route map and everything off for it. <laughs> yes, you had to learn the route and know, know it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it didn't give much away, that route. <laughs> no heads-up display, no nothing. No. Proper job. Just the way it should be. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's 97 of you lovely people in tonight, which is fantastic. We did over 100 at some point. Sam, you're, you're good at drawing the crowds in. <laughs> so oh, if, we'll have to do this more often. <laughs> if you have... I, t I tell you, you can drive next time and I'll conduct. <laughs> if you haven't already, do please like and subscribe. That would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, we are coming up to a station. Is this Langley or Ivor, or have we gone past all of those? No, no, no. You are literally at Twyford, which is five miles from Reading. So uh, it's normally the time when you start thinking about coasting. Okay, so just shut off and let her run. And let her run. I've just gone straight. I don't know, I don't know how good the brakes are on HST. Um, there will be a magnet for 80 over 95. Uh, I think that's not after this signal. It's between two bridges. We, we'll see what happens. Could be tea and biscuits with the manager. <laughs> Daniel Evanson, hi Deverell. How are you and Sam tonight? I could be better because on last Wednesday I had a... Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that, Daniel. That's always sad, the, the loss of a pet. Um, yeah, I'm not too bad myself and Sam, I think Sam's okay. I'll let Sam answer that one. I'm very well. I'm going on holiday tomorrow, so... <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again. Uh, summer exotic. Only Greece. Oh, only Greece. <laughs> Oh, I don't only know. Greece. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never never been to Greece or the Greek islands. It does appeal. Um, I've uh, I've made the fatal mistake of having children. So I, I I really wouldn't advise that. <laughs> right, you might get this magnet round here in a minute, and that's probably when you start on shrugging some speed off because after the reading after. After Sonic Cussing, which you're in at the moment, um, the speed does drop down to 50 for the platforms, depending which route they're sending you in on. Okay, well, the speed seems to be. I've just dropped it into initial braking. The speed seems to be coming down um, pretty quickly. Yeah, you're coming past Thames Valley Park. You'll have Kennet Bridge Junction that peels off to the right off the down relief line. As long as you're going sort of. 70 past the next signal, which looks like a, is that a double yellow? Uh, if it's a single, then they've got something very wrong in the game. Uh, yeah. I can't see, it just looks like a little little yellow blob. Yeah, oh no, it's a double yellow. Yeah, two yellows. As long as you're going 70 past there, you should be good. Uh, just over, so I'll, gi I'll give it a little splash more. Yeah. So the next signal will route you into a platform. Uh, main aspect is platform 9, junction uh, 1 is 8, junction 2 is platform 7. Those two platforms are both 50 entrance speeds. But there will be a red at the end of the platform. <laughs> red ahead. Raygun says that train driver salary log. Uh. Mark says braking from full speed for the AWS works for me. Does it work for your passengers, Mark? They've spilled coffee everywhere. Oh, there you go. Routed into platform eight, so it's 50 over the points. Uh, we, will, we, will, we won't do that. <laughs> no, not, not with the red at the end of the platform. No, it could be Especially with platform eight, because it's a shorter platform than the rest of them. And uh, does, does Great Western Railway have a 20 mile an hour at the AWS Magnet policy? Yes, I believe that company does have a 2020 policy. Or a 2200 or whatever they call it these days. I know every company that I've worked for has been um, slightly different. Yeah, they don't like us using the magnet because at Guildford the magnet's right next to the signal. Yeah, if you drive southwestern up through um, sort of Charing Cross, Waterloo, London Bridge, the, the signals are like 200 yards apart in places, so you really can't use the magnet. <laughs> no. <laughs> it would be bad news. Your stop mark, I believe, for HST, because they're still there at Reading these days, is literally the drop-off at the end of the platform. Just past WH Smith. 
Oh, which actually says WH Smith. That's, yeah, interesting. I didn't think they had the IPs for that, but... No. Okay, fair enough. Oh! <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> hey, success! Open the hey. doors, on the right. On the right. Do these, are these, were these fitted with door interlock? No. No, okay, so... Yeah, Re reality, we don't yeah. open the doors, somebody else does it. So, yeah, the train manager opens the doors on those. The, the uh, castle class sets have been fitted with traction interlock. Um, but again, it's a bit like the turbos where you can roll with the doors open uh, yep. if you take the brake off. Uh, let's put the HUD on and see what it's doing. It's loading passengers. I don't know where your DRA is on these. Um, I think it's below the, the brake pipe pressure. That one there. Oh, oh. it is. Yeah. I, li I like your subtle hint there, you know, saying I don't know where the DRA is. What, what you're saying is set the DRA. <laughs> <laughs> They'll make a manager out of me one day. Yes, I, it's, it's very good how you word things. I do, I do that with my trainees. It's like, what's the speed along here? Oh, okay. What did you say the speed along? Yep. Right, so why are you doing twice that then? <laughs> yes them enough rope to hang themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know, if you will find rope and an axe in the uh, trailer guard standard of an HST, should you ever need it. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Are some of the turns that bad? Well, I don't know. That's uh, something else I've, I've learned through useless information of what's in the crash cupboard of an HST. There is on, I don't know if the same on 387s, but on 375s, um, or any other lecture stuff for that matter. There's there was like a saw in the um, emergency cupboard. It's like a really yes, the HSTs had a saw. It's a really bad saw, and like you'd, you'd get a fallen tree, and if you were brave, you'd take the saw out and try and cut it up. <laughs> good luck, <laughs> Mark. Sarcastic law student. No neutral adversity. No, I, I really didn't make a good job of that. But I, I'm I'm blaming the root conductor um, because that's just what I happens. would. I would always blame the root conductor. Oh, I, absolutely. It was it was on your license, Sam. So it's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll return it to the OOR now. Then <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a gold medal though, so it can't be that bad. It can't be that bad at all. Oh, there you go. We'll take that. <laughs> Oh, right, we'll do something a bit more challenging now then. So we'll, we'll go back to main menu. Corbin's Transport Hub YouTube. Can I have a shout out? It is done. And we'll jump in because I haven't modified my timetable so I don't have the um, 387 in here. But we'll do the 166 which I believe now has working PIS. Oh, blimey. I wonder if they've made the brakes any uh, different on here because they were... Interestingly sharp, shall we say? Uh, but they're not like that in real life. No, I can I can imagine. <laughs> um, so something that's relatively stoppy, but I, I don't think we really want to do another hour. So maybe a half an hour. Is that relatively stoppy? It doesn't tell you what stations they stop Oxford. at when you click on them, which is which is quite annoying. Oxford Oxford to Pad generally only stops at Slough. Uh. I yeah. think. Slough. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at a different service. Uh, Lily yeah, suggests the... 166 brakes are different now. Okay. Oh, uh, this could be interesting. Elias, have you ever driven on the North Downs line? I I've, I signed the North Downs line as far as Rygate. <laughs> Literally one station um, where the third rail runs out. I've, I've, route, I've, I've had a couple of route learning trips over it as far as Shalford. Um, but I don't sign it. Um, I believe you know that route, though, don't you, Sam? I do. I go the whole way on it. It's. Um, I've only ever been on it a couple of times as a passenger north of Guildford, but it is quite. A, it's quite a pretty route, I'd say. It's pretty and very hilly. It's. It's quite easy for driving freight along there because the speed restrictions i think we're like 40 or 35 all the way more or less um just pretty much yeah we we have a bit of a uh, bit of speeding up and doing slowing down i think uh, if you're looking for a stopper we'll probably want to look at a, a two papa they're generally the stoppers but that's going to be an all stop stopper or most most stop stopper because we don't do all stops uh, two papa three nine. It's fifty four. We'll we'll give it a go and see how we get on. 
see how we get on. We'll see how we get on. Gameplay car washes Lego more. Can I have a shout out? We're just doing we're just doing shout outs now for everyone. <laughs> Everybody loves a shout out. A Kentish train guy who's one of our fantastic moderators. You can tell no expense has been spared with the guest stars. All the root knowledge. <laughs> okay, right. So, um, I used to sign 465 networkers, which are very, very similar. Uh, so, hopefully... I'm They're considerably quicker. Normal ice. Oh, of course. AWS, AWS, AWS. AWS will be on the MCB on the back wall behind you. I knew that. It is in. Okay, key. Door is open. That means the aircon's broken. Aircon? <laughs> See, this is really weird because most routes start with the doors closed. And this is kind of starting with the doors. Uh, door, yeah, you have to open the doors and load the passengers. And this is telling me just to kind of. Go. Go. Yeah. Ah, oh, look. Headlights. Oh, it does work, doesn't it? Uh, day running is that, that side, one. isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It, that's that's quite nice. That. I rather like that. Yeah, the uh, the PIS does work. Okay, right. We're running late. Let's go. I'm going to turn the HUD off. So where are we stopping? Are we literally all stations? Twyford first stop. Twyford, Maidenhead, Yeah, Twy Tapload. Twyford, Maidenhead, Taplow, Burnham, Slough. West Drayton. Oh, and then West Drayton. Eden Broadway, London, Paddington. Yeah, that's fine. That's the old calling pattern then. Yeah. It probably helps if you go into forward. Forward helps. Notch 4 to pull away. Uh, are, you, are you okay four. to go straight into Notch 4 on one of these? Or, or is yeah, it best straight, to... straight into 4, otherwise you'll probably roll back. Oh, we have 7 <laughs> notches, don't we? Okay, right. You do, yeah. So, okay. four, four, to, 4 to start it going, 6 when you start moving, and then full power at about 5 mile an hour. And you are 40 coming out of here, even though Train Sim World will tell you off, because apparently it thinks it's only 30 at the junction that's coming up. Oh, okay. That's, um... We'll turn the HUD off. Yep. Yeah, pla your... platform 15 is 40 out the whole way till you get to the gantry 1, which is the first signal you'll see. Uh, that's when the speed limit goes up to uh, to 90, which is actually after the junction for the low levels that's coming up on the left there. And it was 2015, I don't know what it's like before 2018 because I wasn't working there. <laughs> that's fair enough. I'll, uh, I'll let you off in that case. One of the things that, that does bug me with Train Sim World um, is the amount of green signals you get. I think I think it'd be nice to get a bit of variety. Yes, I, I know. I know there's an issue with kind of traffic density on on sort of some lower end machines, and it takes up a lot of CPU and processing power. Um, but even if the traffic wasn't physically there, and they would just kind of chuck some sort of your stop, you know, just to sort of signal it in such a way where you're following something. I mean, you do on some services, but it's. I, I don't know how it is for you, but it, it was, even when I was driving passenger trains, t to get a whole journey on green signals is like unheard of. Yeah, um, it's, especially now since Crossrail's come in fully properly, um, we we can leave Reading and we'll get the first green signal at Gantry One, which you've just gone past, and then the rest of it will be chasing yellows the whole way, which gets very tiring. right arrow key on my keyboard to see that's just panning me round. We've got London Paddington on the front. Oh, we've got... Can we change the not in service, all stations? Ooh. Yeah, the... Um... Thames trains, let's have that at the front. <laughs> oh, isn't PIS there... isn't there anymore. <laughs> Only lets me go one way, which is really annoying. Is it not alphabetical order? Oh, okay, that's annoying. Basingstoke, right? We're going there. <laughs> Pay attention to the road.
yeah, they've actually been nice. They've taken those old um, PIS keypads out now, so they're down. Um, we've got a train FX system that's below the GSMR now, oh, which is actually simulated there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, 112 of you lovely people watching tonight. That has got to be a new record. So if you haven't already, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely brilliant. Maxwell's waiting very patiently to jump into the Discord server. How far have we got before we got to put the brakes on, Sam? Uh, you can probably start coasting from this bridge, uh, and then it's three signals you can start braking. Okay, well, I'm going to press Discord there. No, I'm going to press the other one that says Discord on it, which is that one. <laughs> Platform 4 at Hastings there, Max. 377. Hayden S, they look like um, Great Western locations. It's definitely Twyford. <laughs> Twyford. And a nice 37 there with a converted 319 type thingy majig. Not quite sure what they're called. So guys, if you're not in right, the well, oh, sorry. Sorry, yeah, the uh, the next magnet you want to start breaking in step one. Step one of the magnet. We are in step one. So guys, if you're not in the Discord server already, there is an invitation link in the description below. It'd be absolutely brilliant to see you over there. Um, Sam is in the chat with me. Is one of our um, is one of is the is the main community manager. He's more active in there than I am, to be honest with you. So a big public thank you, Sam, for all the work you've done. It's been interesting over the last few weeks, to say the least. <laughs> been fun. Fun. <laughs> uh, it's your choice of words, not mine. <laughs> Um, yeah, and if you want to post any pictures, guys, then you can jump into the Discord and we're in the live stream pictures page, and you're welcome to post anything you want in there, and I will pop it up on the screen. That's a pretty sound breaking point. It does look like we're coming in a little bit slow. Um, I'll leave it, though. I'll have, I'll have faith. Yeah. As long as you don't... Yeah, I think that says 40. Yeah, we're touching 20, 40 30, now. 40. Yeah, 40 at the car park. That's generally good. I'll try and remember where the, uh, actually no, because it's going to tell you where the stop car marks are, isn't it? Yes, I've still got that, that particular bit turned on. Yeah. So the branch line round to the, um, that's coming in from the left, whereabouts does that head off to? That goes off to Henley on Thames. So I'm going to give that a little bit of two. Yeah, a bit of, bit of two, yeah. I'm, I'm used to going to the very end of the platform now with the 387s, so... Do you generally have different braking points for the 387s, or do you do you tend to use the same braking points? Tend to use the same ones. Um, it's, it's very rare that we get a turbo stopper now. I've not done a turbo stopper since 2019, so uh, may, maybe slightly rusty on some of my braking points. But they, they do generally stay the same, even though the Step 1 in a, a turbo is, is phenomenally better than a Step 1 in a 387. Yeah, of course. Roman Lindley, welcome to Dad Brown, new subscriber, fantastic. Oh, I'm trying to catch up with the chat. There's 160 of you lovely people in tonight. And I know I said it just a minute ago, but if you haven't already, please do hit the like button and subscribe. That would be absolutely brilliant. Um, locomotive library. We haven't done that for a little while yet. Yeah, let's play again. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. We have a 165 on the fast. Do they run down the fast very often? I expect they get in the way of everything. Not, not anymore. Again, they, they, they used to, until uh, the 387 started doing most of that stuff. Long time loading passengers. Would this generally be guard operated or is this DOO for our... No, this, this is all DOO. We'll have, we'll have a bit of free cam action because someone was saying sound the horn on departure, so... Off we go. So you say notch four to get it going. Notch four to get it going. Then straight into six. And then, yeah, seven at about five mile an hour. In real life, you hear an audible click behind you when it, the governor's let you take full power. Ah, oh, so you're actually uh, restricted from taking full power by the train itself? Yes, yeah. I must say, the physics do seem much better on this since it was updated. 
it seems to slow down a lot more realistically than before because before step one you could leave it really late and it would it would stop perfectly it was ridiculously sharp most definitely yeah and they, they weren't even like that fresh from the factory in 1991 <laughs> <laughs> right 156 Andrew you are the third one on my screen with number six let's play locomotive delivery location we're going for a line again aren't we Gary Rickwood welcome to Dabra new subscriber Six guys. Ooh. Just get ten seconds. <laughs> you got any idea what it might be, Sam? I think I do. Yes. There's also something coming up here that might be interesting for you to see. Is the uh, is the splitting distance signal for uh, Ruskin Junction? They're actually um, reasonably rare splitting distance. We have five on the Great Western bit that I I may possibly be associated with. Is the splitting distance uh, splitting distance signal modelled on here? I don't know. Uh, LWR West England trains 100% Sheffield Hayden Sheffield Super Tram Northern Princess Productions plot twist LWR that is not DLR Z Block Scars 399 Sheffield. 156 Andrew, Sheffield Tram, Bassett's 86, Tram! It's a tram -a train It's a tram -a train I, It might not be. We'll do, we'll, we'll do one more. Post your numbers now for locomotive delivery location. Aeronautic 237 had to Google it. I, I think that's cheating. Disqualified, we need a steward's inquiry. Yeah, Google's cheating. <laughs> uh, Owain Sutton, what's a splitting distance? Have we gone past where it should be, Sam? Uh, yeah, we, we're well past that now. Yeah, it, it isn't modelled on this one. It might be going the other way. Um, I have definitely seen one on here, but I can't remember for the life of me where it is. Okay, so the, the easiest way I can describe a split a splitted distance is it's two signal heads at slightly different heights. So you'll have one signal head here and then one signal head slightly lower. Um, I believe I'm correct in saying they can't show red aspects, they are just distance signals. Is that correct, Sam? Some of them can show a red aspect. Okay. Um, none, none of our ones can, but I have heard that they can, can display a red. However, they're not called splitting distance, they're called splitting something else. Um, yeah. But yeah, for, for us, the splitting distance, yeah, it is basically, it can only give you a proceed aspect. And the basic behind it is you take the, the least restrictive route. Yeah, so if both, both um, signal heads are showing one yellow, your next one's red. If one's showing one yellow and one's showing green, that tells you what route you've got set at the next, uh, the next um, signal, basically. Yeah, basically, yeah. We, we have something similar called preliminary route indicators. Um, which I think are quite unique to, uh, to uh, as far as I know, they're quite unique to um, to the southeastern area because they were put in for the uh, Eurostar services when they used to run on domestic lines. Yeah, we, we've got some plurary route indicators around Reading. Uh, there's also one between Southall and Hayes uh, that gives you the advance warning for airport junction because uh, they worked out the trains couldn't stop in time if they received the wrong route. There we go. See, I was completely wrong. They're not exclusive. <laughs> Actually, there's also one there before uh, North Pole Junction as well. I don't think they're the, uh, the IETs. I don't think they're modelled on here though, are they? Again? No, I don't think so. No. It's, it's it's quite interesting because there's quite a lot of sort of new signals and bits and bobs coming online, with like poser signals and um, PRIs and, and bits and bobs, and the signalling does seem to be evolving a little bit, which is quite nice. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, we're passing the uh, business part, so you want to start slowing down 75 anywhere around here. You might get a magnet for it. Um, Oh, look at that. Yeah, the magnet doesn't exist in real life, uh, but it starts at <laughs> not this overbridge, but the next overbridge. Where the signal is. That's Chub where the 75 starts. Chub with not having the HUD. Starts now. <laughs> we're, we're down for that. Chub with yeah. not having the HUD on is I never know what power notch or anything I'm in. Um, I'm using the brake gauge to kind of judge it. Yeah, 75 starts here now. I think in the game it actually starts a bit further on round. Um, but at the next magnet for the next signal, 75, step one break should bring you down nicely for Maidenhead. So step one at the next signal. 
Correct. And we have got GJ Barnard again. You are again the third one on my screen with number 12. And we're going to do a reveal in Let's, Let's play. play. Locomotive Delivery, delivery location. location. And I have got the breaking sound. Don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> number 12. You get your 10 seconds, guys. I'll, uh, I'll let you all have a little discussion about it and I'll do a reveal and then we'll go on to uh, game number two. I am getting some more sound effects made for that. I think I might have just said that, or I, I meant to say that. I may be repeating myself. It's been it's been a long day of doing not very much. I did have some root loading this morning. It's it's very weird watching a stream without actually hearing anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Black Roro nineteen ninety, welcome to Dad Rail, new subscriber. Yeah, I think I'm coming in a bit bit slow there, so I'm just taking that off. Yeah, the, um, the the new cross rail sidings are to the left there. That's the old engineer's yard. Um, the crossover here is generally where you want to be aiming for about thirty. Yeah, so we're we're, we're pretty pretty much on the money there. You're pretty good, yeah. Um, Duck Hunter, they appear differently on my screen to what they do on yours, bud. So I always take the third one that comes up on my screen. Um, I used to take the first, but I changed it to the third because people were kind of sitting there waiting to press enter um, so that's why we do the third number now we are free on the free hopefully on the monitors oh look at that skill stop <laughs> does only break step two no no I mean one look at that yeah one yeah yeah I'll take that into neutral do you tend to go into neutral when you stop, or is it...? Yeah, ne neutral and uh, step three, I hold it in. It's just habit. And we've got working PIS on here as well now, which is lovely. We're late, though. Look at that. How are we late? I think I was like, turbo. mucking about a Reading. <laughs> <laughs> we we can make some time out with a bit of step two. We're, we're blaming the traction. <laughs> we always blame the traction. <laughs> we always do. Good workman always drains his tools. Um, Sam Oliver, three nine nine City Link. We'll do we'll do, we'll do a reveal. Let's, Let's play. play locomotive delivery location. location. Yeah, three nine nine uh, Sheffield Super Tram. Uh, picture from one five eight travel one five eight. Thank you very much for that, bud. Um, that might be pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable in this game. See, at the very beginning, Sam, you guessed it was a train. So, you know, I didn't want to say anything, but it's, it's not really a train. This is probably the only time. <laughs> it's, 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 prob it's probably the only time you're going to guess a train in this game, and it's going to be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be one. <laughs> <laughs> so, well done to absolutely everybody who got that right. Um, I'm going to press game two. And this is from Daniel's Trains UK official, and we'll start this one in a few moments. Oh, I haven't gone into forward again. Right, four. Off to Taplo. Off to Taplo. Taplo is an interesting one because we, we hardly ever stop there anymore. Um, so if my memory serves me right, it's about. 50 you want to get up to and then unfortunately we break at the BMW garage which you can't see in the simulator <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it's sort of maybe two three train lengths after you come off the Maidenhead viaduct okay then um, sadly there's no signals or references or anything that I can use for it and Taplow is a bit of a weird station because the uh, the platforms are curved, so it actually curves away, and you can't physically see the platform that you're stopping at. It's almost like you're. So it's, it's, a, it's almost like you're preempting a station overrun here, Sam, and you've got your no, no. ready in advance. No, no, <laughs> not not with a three car turbo, as long as it's on the platform. <laughs> Northern Princess Productions, a good workman, never blames his tools. A good driver always blames his tools. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Uh, Dad Brown and Sam Robinson, where is the level crossing at Twyford in Train Sim World 2? It is between platforms 4 and 5, and it's a little foot crossing that takes you over to the car park. 
Uh, it's on the country end, not the not the London end of the station. Aaron, also so, yeah, you probably want to start coasting here. Yeah, you did say fifty. Sorry, my bad. I was in the chat. Which is which is and which then, is why I always over on stations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might just have to say break at some point. Um, it's going to be a bit of guesswork because yeah, down, down to the left you look out and there's a very nicely lit up BMW garage that's got security lights on at night. Um, I'd probably say around here. Tw twenty. To get. Is that a twenty-two or twenty-three <laughs> chain marker? I should turn my HUD off again. Cheating. <laughs> Yeah, you look down to the left, there's a very nice um, shell garage, BMW garage, that's always lit up, so you can always see it. <laughs> oh, there's the road, so yeah, it's about there somewhere. <laughs> it's where that field is. Mm. It's quite interesting what you can use for breaking points and stuff. Um, I did have one instructor try to wind me up once, he said, break when you see the cows in the field. I said, yeah, pull, pull the other one. That might work on somebody else. But <laughs> some of the breaking points, especially when you go away for a long weekend and come back and find they've demolished it. <laughs> Always pick something solid. Always pick something permanent, like a gas tower, and then they demolish it. <laughs> oh, yeah, they've just demolished the gas towers at Wandsworth. So. Yeah. Wandsworth Town. There's three Wandsworths. All very close to Hawkins each other. Three Dorkings. Dorking West, Dorking, Dorking Deep Dean, and Dorking, Dorking. Dorking Main. Uh, I believe. I overrun that nicely. That's fine. We, we, we always stop at the end now with the with the stuff that I'm more used to. Make them walk. <laughs> make them walk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whale Gamer NL, welcome to Dad Rail, new subscriber. Hey Richard, is 4Yankee19 running this week at all with the strikes? That train has run, but it's run as a Zulu service and it's been re-timed and re-puffed. Um, so yes, it, ha it has run, but not as 4Yankee19, it's been a Zulu. Sam, have taking a trip to the Lou branch. Lou <laughs> branch? Not been down there for a few years. A certain driver I follow on social had a breaking point, which was a tall tree. Yeah, that's nothing that, wrong with a tall tree. <laughs> until it's until it's in front of you and not in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Laserjet wants the Discord. I think your picture's disappeared, Laserjet. We can't, we can't quite see it. Oh no, we can. There we go. Yes. 34046 at Braunton. Lock doors. You're in forward. I am in forward. We're off to Burnham. To Burnham next. Yeah. Oh, someone's left the access gate open. Or oh, stop and report. And those stupid spike things that they put on the platform ramps. Makes makes diff makes it difficult walking over them. I don't find those too bad to walk over. It's the the ones they put at level crossings, the like the, the wooden planks they have at level crossings. They're they're horrible to walk over. I and I do have. Anything I've ever walked over one. I I have legitimate reason to walk over them because we have to get to trains on ballast sites and stuff like that. So I'm not not trespassing. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Oh, I am. I am trying. Burnham's to... an interesting one because it's on the right because it's an island platform, and uh, we generally shut off an access. Um, there's like a little work site, uh, which is probably around by the next signal. But again, it's about it's about fifty. I shall shut off at the next signal or fifty or whatever comes first. This little work site thingy here, or yeah. Got the yeah, although we're generally doing... Yeah, there. Yeah, it's about there, yeah. Yeah, got we're generally doing... Got the little sort of RRV ramp there. Yeah. And then you're actually looking for a mile post. <laughs> this is the breaking <laughs> point for Burnham, um, which is after a bridge. 
I don't know how accurate the mile posts are on this. Well, I've seen 22 come up a few times on mile posts. I, I don't know if they all say 22. <laughs> they probably do. I've still got yeah, no, I don't. I, I don't know if it's there. Yeah, I'd probably break about here. There's a there's, there's a mile post that's hidden behind a rhododendron bush. <laughs> we'll we'll get we'll get some breaks in. It looks it looks yeah. about right. Sorry, step step one will be all right. Yeah, it's still a way off. Kieran's made a good point there. Yeah, we're not late. The train is late. I do you know what? Mm. I, I can't argue with that. It's always the trains that's late. I always used to say to people, yeah, don't worry, it's not going to go without me. I mean, we live in hope, but inevitably it never does. Yeah, Burnham, I believe, if it's model, you should be stopping by the uh, the bendy mirror. The bendy mirror. The brakes are definitely um, a lot brakes more realistic. Brakes do seem more realistic. Yeah. Using brake step three, that's terrible. It's all right. It's just like real life. Then <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you have to on these because the brakes are, are shocking. Some are good, some are bad. Um, you, you, you generally get a turbo that either goes but doesn't stop, or you get one that doesn't go but does stop. It's very rare you get one that does both. <laughs> Uh, it's bad maintenance. We can say that because I don't think Dan's in the stream. He's probably fixing the train I broke yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Evening, Stu. How are you doing? Good to see you here. Yeah, it's kind of... Um, I don't know if you can see in the stream. It's kind of glitching out on the side of the train there. Um, I don't know why it keeps it keeps doing that. Certain trains and certain routes just kind of glitch out a little bit like that. It's a bit annoying. Doopy 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 doo. Oh, has there always been a blue light for the closed door button, or is I have I only just noticed that? Because uh, that that definitely isn't there in real life. I was gonna say <laughs> norm a... normally that would only come up when you um, have traction interlock, surely. Well, we, we we don't have any any lights for the for the door controls. Um, the the traction interlocks on the uh, the fault indication panel, which is the uh, big long strip of lights on the left. Oh, so you get traction so into the, oh, door interlock. It's the very yeah, it's the very top one. Yeah, so it goes red when you open the doors, and uh, um, it should be blue uh, for when you, you when it's all good. They should be blue lights, not white lights. But all the blues faded out of them now, so they've all gone white. Into gear, that helps. Train spotted from Berkshire says, Sam Robertson, how did you break a train yesterday? Is, is there anything you can possibly say about that on a on a public stream, Sam? Um, there's, uh, it had a WSP fault, a wheel slide prevention um, fault, which uh, according to our maintenance team was uh, a non-passenger service train, so I had to go back to the depot. What you mean is you put flats on it? No, 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 the WSP <laughs> was working, um, but it was being very eager at trying to uh, not stop the train in perfectly dry, tasty railhead conditions. Ah, yes, I can, I, I can imagine, because the WSP system has the ability to release the brakes on individual axles, and if it's, if it's not detecting the correct speeds and stuff, it could think the train stopped and released the brakes and you're still travelling on at 50, 60 miles an hour. That, that, that could be interesting. It was interesting, fortunately only did it about six miles an hour or less, but it was uh, constant WSP activity, which uh, meant that I wasn't happy driving the train towards buffer stops, uh, which no, on I a branch can... line you, you do every time. I can imagine. <laughs> it's... Pts, pts, pts. It sounds something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, train spotting. Tonight's guest is um, Sam, who is a driver for, yes. who is a passenger driver for a different company to me. I'm not a passenger driver, so obviously it's a different company, but who, who, is, a, who is a passenger driver? Right, your next station is Slough. 
Um, so you, 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 you generally shut off at 75 if it will get up to 75. If it doesn't get up to 75, there's what we call the uh, billboard bridge, uh, or more commonly known as the Farnham Road Bridge, which is the next big overbridge coming up. Uh, and then you'll you'll go towards Slough, and there might be another magnet because it's 75 through Slough. Um, again, they're not there in real life, but uh, they seem to be simulated in here. Um, so yeah, billboard bridge or the Farnham Road Bridge is coming up after this signal. Yeah, we made it just, uh, just a little over 60 we've made it to, so I'll, um, yes. I'll shut back here. Not not bad for a turbo. Uh, in a turbo, would you typically shut back notch by notch, or can you just whack it straight back to idle? You generally go straight to one, power notch one, and then give it a second or so there, and then, then put it in off. Uh, so you just, you're just kind of waiting for the engine revs to drop off? Before you Engines can... to drop off, yeah. yeah. The maintainers, the maintainers yeah. like it when you do that. Yeah, a bit, bit of mechanical sympathy. <laughs> and then anywhere after this junction that's the trailing points are there, you can uh, whack the brake in in one. These and, trailing uh, points here, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, we, we generally aim for below 60 under that bridge there because you've got a big Horlix building off to the left. And then these big buildings here with the old Slough power signal box, um, which is still there that's not used. It's all, t is it Thames Valley signaling centre all the way along now? It is all now based down at Digcot at TVSC. I think they control everything to Bristol now as well, and uh, towards Seven Tunnel Junction. Oh yeah, so it might be a bit quick, a bit quick in a turbo because the platforms aren't quite as long. Yeah, give me a little bit. I think I'm going to need a bit of three to. Yeah, a bit of bit of three maybe. Yeah. Oh crikey, this could be a team biscuit. Yeah, moment. it's fine. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> That'll stop. Nah, it's fine. Yeah, you, <laughs> platform six doesn't exist anymore, it so the platform actually runs all the way down to where the uh, where the junction is. <laughs> it thinks it's an HST. That's why we've stopped there. Yeah, that's fine. It wants, it it's on the platform. It wants to be an HST. Actually, to be honest, that's roughly nowadays where the um, where the two three stop car mark is for a turbo. That's because your braking point the, your braking point was spot on. You see, you were thinking about today, my, not. not yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> my braking points are all the platform extensions because the platform has been massively extended here for both the, the reliefs and the mains. Uh, it does run because they've, they've infilled platform six. So platform six off to the left doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, okay. And uh, the, the, the signal is generally where the end of the platform is now. So on both on both the lines. I'm only five minutes late. Post your numbers <laughs> now. Good going for a turbo. Do you struggle to keep time with turbos, generally speaking, then? Yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. Even before the 387s, you would still struggle to keep time. So Some of the timings were very optimistic, <laughs> especially as you, you had to stick your head out the window to dispatch it. You, if you couldn't see, you had to get out on the platform, as whereas the, the 387 sort of alleviated some of that by being able to do it. You know, sat in comfort in an air-conditioned cab. There's something nostalgic about driving a, a turbo on a on a stopper back up to Paddington. It's quite quite good fun. What do you prefer driving? I always prefer a turbo. I, I much prefer the view out the front, even though they are painfully slow and uh, painfully hot in the summer. Um, but to me, I I much prefer driving those. Just, purely because you've got an uninterrupted view and out the front. I, I noticed that driving 375s um, for seven years up and down the main line, um, you get in a class 66 and it's like, whoa, I can see. <laughs> house. The, 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 wind, the windscreen, I, I think they're about 45 centimetres wide or something like that. It's not very wide at all. It's, I'm, I'm taking a guess at about 45 centimetres. It's probably not far off. Yeah. A bit lesser boxy. Yes, most definitely. It's like watching a, a widescreen movie, sort of, but it's been flipped on its side. Through a phone. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the TikTok train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh dear, dear. Right, how are we doing numbers? Uh, 156 Andrew, you are the third one on my screen with number 12. Let's play. Let's, Let's play. play. Locomotive delivery location. location. Oh, hello.
I think that give that gave quite a lot away that little box there. I have no idea, but I definitely know it's a train this time. <laughs> it's definitely a train this time. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> Uh, Bowen Potato, good evening. How is the service so far? So far, so good. We're a few minutes down, but uh, we haven't had to have tea and biscuits with the manager yet, so all is good. Just out of interest, is West Drayton's the next stop, isn't it? Uh, that's what it says, yes. I'll, uh, I'll turn me hard off again, because I'm cheating. Oh, I didn't, didn't see that. <laughs> it just looks like a, a line of white blobs. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Don't so you fly through Langley and Iver, so that's fine. Uh, 156 Andrew says Carlisle, train spotting Dutchess Sutherland at Carlisle. South East Rail Productions, Carlisle. Pep EMU fan, Carlisle Station. Northern Princess Productions, Carlisle Station with some Mark 1, some sort of steamer at the front. Train spot from Barclays is Bournemouth, Nitrax, Carlisle. Hello, people. Hey, Joe British Ace, welcome to the stream, bud. How are you doing? At Ivor, which is your next station, you can think about shutting off. You can either use the station or you can use the M25 overbridge, because both are pretty sensible giveaways. <laughs> Okay, what's our line speed at the moment? Sound we're 75. Uh, it's still it's still 90. It's 75 through Slough, but uh, literally as you leave Slough, it goes back up to 90. Lovely. Yeah, the, the only other speed change you have to worry about now is uh, is approaching uh, Hamwell, where it drops to 80. It's a lovely station, Hamwell. It is. I've only stopped there once. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I'm guessing kind of before um, Crossrail and everything else, or Acton Mainline, Hamwell, all those stations would be served by by um, Great Western. Or Thames Trains was it then, or am I am I years out of date? Uh, Thames Trains was uh, decades ago. Um, Great Western Link, I think, came in in the early 2000s. And um, yeah, we, we, we only really stopped at Hamwell and Acton Mainline late in the evening. Uh, we're actually looking out for another mile post here, which probably won't be simulated. So I've just shot off under the um, bridge there. Yeah, you can probably break about here, I'm going to say. She's got step one in. Step one, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite difficult when you when you sort of use things like mile posts and things and trying to work out. Um, you know, there'll be a speed sign for... Uh, for a junction that's coming up, as long as you sort of hit the junction at 60. I don't know if the junction's actually on here, because that might be a new thing. Oh no, there's a junction, yeah, yeah. yeah so as long as you do 60, 60 there. Yeah. And then there's a there's a speed board for the uh, the back platform at West Drayton. And as long as you're doing the same speed as that speed board says, because it says 30 on it. But again, that's for a 387 where you're going all the way to the end of the platform. I think the um, the two, three stop marks actually quite close to the country end of the platform at West Drayton. Yeah, just I'm as a word of warning. I'm going to drop that into two, I think, a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah, it's where you get so used to just going to the end of all the platforms that your uh, your sort of speed points become all a bit squiffed when you uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> when you come to drive something a bit shorter. I can see the merit in stopping at the end of every single platform. I mean, it does um, greatly mitigate the, the risk of uh, stop shorts. Yes, absolutely. But then, of course, you have an increased risk of station overrun. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, a little bit of a double-edged sword. And most of the time, the passengers are not particularly keen on walking to the end of the platform. If they have a, especially if it's a 12-car platform, they have like a two-car train. They don't tend to like to walk. They, they tend to linger where the uh, the footbridge or the entrances to the station seem to be, which when you stop a two-car right at the other end of the platform, like you do at West Straight and on the up main, uh, all the stop car boards are at the very end of that platform on the right, <laughs> and the entrance is at the very country end of the uh, of the station. <laughs> well, even, even when you've got a twelve car train, it's it's my my favourite. When I was working on the platform many years ago, my favourite announcements. Was the, uh, 
Passengers, please use all available doors when boarding this service. Please use all available doors. You're all standing at one door. Walk 20 foot. There is another door. We'll be able to get the train away a lot quicker. Move. Something like that. Not so aggressive, though. <laughs> Especially with a 12 car, you, you, you do end up making announcements going, we have 24 sets of doors, please feel free to use them all. Yes. No, everyone everyone wants to be... Everybody using one door. Yeah. I like passengers, I think. It's the sheep mentality, isn't it? I, I like passengers when they're on other people's trains. Thanks. <laughs> Ballast doesn't <laughs> complain. <laughs> Oh, this is, this is another place where you might see a split in distance. I can see a green and a yellow up in the distance, very close to each other, yeah. so quite possibly. Yeah, it's not this signal, because the, the platform now runs up to that signal. So it just shows how much longer they've made these platforms. And the uh, the back platform at West Drayton, it goes even further beyond that signal. Um, but there is actually a splitting distance. Again, there's another magnet for um, Stockley Bridge Junction, which is 70, which it may warn you about. That is there in real life, but again, it's route set. So if you're you're set across it, it will 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 warn you. But if you're going on the up relief, it won't. Yes, it does. Like the splitting distance is modelled there. Ah, well, there you go. So there we go. Yeah, as we were saying earlier about splitting distance, if the signal on the right had a green and the one on the left had a yellow, that would tell us we're we're turning right position junk, uh, position four route indicator at the next signal. If they were both yellow, then obviously the next signal will be red. They're both yellow. It's a, it's a 3185 form. <laughs> if they're both yellow, sorry. Yeah, yeah. If, they're, if, they're both, if both signal heads are displaying one yellow each, um, something's gone wrong with it. it just if it's single yellow, it'll just, just display on one. Oh, it'll only display... Oh, okay. I do drive trains for a living, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've I've never never come across them. Um, yes, it's kind of just. I, I was probably taught about them at some point. Saying that, I don't think we have them anywhere on South Eastern. So I, I, I don't know what driver training was like for you, but it was kind of like we skipped over a lot of stuff that didn't apply to the routes we'd be driving. We were sort of like that, but um, yeah, it was it was a bit bit odd on some things, and then over overkill on the other. Um, as you go under this fancy bridge here, you can uh, you can coast, and then the magnet for not this signal, but the signal after that, after the uh, the, the little tunnel of Airport Junction, you can break for Hayes. So not this signal here, the next one. Not this signal, the next one. It's gotcha. it's quite close, but uh, yeah, it's the other side of the tunnel bridge thingy. Matthew Rice, why does the AWS go off when there is a green signal and no speed limit coming up? Uh, when you've got a green signal, you'll get the AWS bell, which is this nice sound you're about to hear now. And when you get that sound, you don't need to react to that. Uh, you only react to it when you get the horn, and you have 2.7 seconds to press the reset button or the emergency brakes will come on. And I should have put the brakes on by now, shouldn't I, Sam? Yeah, step two, please. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right. It's, it's another one that's that's under it, the, the platform starts under this bridge. Oh, so we got the tri-state color repeaters. I yeah, I do like those. Very useful. Uh, it's a, it's amazing just how useful they are. Hmm. Little things. <laughs> but again, I was saying earlier about sort of new signals coming online and, and stuff like that. that. That is one of the, I mean, I, I think they're sort of maybe last five or six years that we've had those. Yeah. It's very weird when you work a route that hasn't gotten fitted, like the Wessex route. They don't seem to have many down there. And it's, it's, it's always confusing. You're like, is it yellow? <laughs> <laughs> You find yourself hovering over the AWS just in case. Where, where, where do you go on the Wessex routes? Well, we go to Basingstoke. Oh, of course you do. There's a there's the junction repeater after Basingstoke. Oh, sorry, a signal a, a banner repeater, and then there's uh, there's one on the um, up southern, just before, uh, early station, which isn't Wessex, but Southwest seems to think they 
it's their bit of line. Uh, Matthew Rice says, I mean, why is there an AWS warning when there are green signals and no speed limits ahead? Um, normally, Matthew, because there's been a temporary speed restriction and the people who've, who've put the restriction down have forgot to take the magnet away. Um, there are a couple of erroneous magnets in places that, that are there and nobody has any idea why. Um, what should happen, if you go over an AWS magnet and you have no reason for it being there, is you should be contacting the signal and reporting it. But if it's something that's always been there, it tends to just kind of get forgotten about and ignored a little bit. Um, we, we have a little bit of a saying, you know, if, sometimes if you see something, you know, you just think, well, the, the driver behind me is a really good chap or chapess, and is definitely going to report that, so I'll let them do it. Which, um, <laughs> you know, they're, they're a really diligent person, and, and, you know, they need the experience contacting the signaller, so I... I you know, it'd be the right thing to do would be to, to let them do it. <laughs> out, out, out of interest, I've got my late notices for uh, for today. We have nine AWS faults on the bit that I drive on. Oh wow! Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm more impressed that you have the late notices. <laughs> oh yeah, always always have my late notices for a paper-free depot. That's <laughs> why I carry around ten sheets of paper every day. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're properly paperless. Everything's on the iPad. Even even the train running, uh, the diagrams, everything. Yeah, no, we're we're not quite that advanced yet. Um, where's your next station, by the way? Is it Southall or are we straight to Ealing? Um, Chapel Chapets is from Princess Productions. I, I was I was attempting to be a, a very inclusive there. Um, how do I get the timetable up on this F1? Ealing Broadway. Ealing Broadway. And then okay, London get her up, get her up to eighty. Eighty miles an hour. 80 miles an hour, because there's so many speed changes between the South Hall and the Ealing Broadway. It goes 90, 85, 80, 85, 80. So we just generally do 80. That sounds like a plan. We, we've got a few yeah. routes like that with the speed limit just up and down, up and down. We, we have one on the um, Tatton Corner line, and you're in a... Um, you're in a... I have to get this right now. You're in a 30... And you get a warning board for a forty-five. Nice. <laughs> because it goes, because it goes thirty, sixty, forty-five. But the forty-five warning is in the thirty. It's like really, yeah. There's so many speed That's limits along that route. Unique. There's so many speed limits. It's like we just no, we just do thirty all the way and not worry about it. The, the speed limits going this way on the up relief are actually a bit easier than they are coming back the other way. Um, on the on the down relief, it does just change about a lot. That's the gas tower on the left that they knocked down. That's what you use for Southall to break up. Oh, lovely! Um, that that massive gas tower is no longer there. Um, <laughs> that was a very handy breaking point for Southall. Um, it, yeah, it, it went overnight. Literally over a weekend, it disappeared. And then, strangely enough, the first train in the morning overshot Southall because <laughs> they used the uh, they used the gas tower to break out, and they saw the great big brick hexagonal building that's coming up on the left here, and think, "Oh, I should be doing forty here." <laughs> no, we're still doing eighty. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yes. But strangely enough, that train failed to call at uh, Southall. It just didn't even bother. Did, I, didn't even try. I expect that's um, uh, any decent manager is going to kind of understand that fully, and yeah, probably yeah, put it, some it, sort it, of notice out very quickly. <laughs> Strangely enough, the next day there was a route notice to put up about it. <laughs> okay, uh, Nitrax, you're Let's the third one play. on my screen. Locomotive delivery location. And uh, we've got number nine. Oh. Ten seconds. Bit of TMU. <laughs> I like to put my glasses on. <laughs> uh, you're you're at a disadvantage because you're looking on like a tiny, tiny screen. So yeah, it's it's on my very small laptop screen. So uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you said eighty, didn't you, Sam? Yeah, eight, yeah. eighty and uh, and roll it. Uh, Bowen Potato, Richard, what is the furthest you would drive as a driver out of Tunbridge? Um, so me personally, the furthest I go is down to Southampton. Um, however, we do have drivers at Tunbridge that sign, um, there's quite a few drivers that sign Peterborough out of Tunbridge, and we've actually got drivers that sign um, as far as Dawlish, Exeter, um, we've got drivers that sign parts of Scotland, we've got drivers that know Anglia, there's no kind of standard route knowledge, it just depends on 
what work we've got on, what trains need to run. Um, could be that we've got a charter train going somewhere and we'll have a driver that signs the entire route for the charter train. So it's, it's really, really varied on freight uh, with route knowledge. But there's, there's, there's sometimes a lot of infighting to try and get route knowledge. It's, it's almost kind of a, the better your route card, the more variety you get, but then the more you can also be uh, mucked about because you know too much. If you'd like to break at the next magnet, that will that will do you nicely for uh, for reading Broadway as you rattle through uh, West Ealing. Next magnet. Break step one. I think there is a warning for your twenty-five into Acton Yard between the next signal and the platform. I was supposed to be going to Acton Yard. No, I am going to Acton Yard Saturday. Um, and I was kind of thinking to myself, oh, that's good, because I'll get to go on Crossrail, because I haven't had to go on Crossrail yet, and then and probably not, as it happens. I think uh, it could, could be an oh, signal. Spring Road Car Park Tunnel, as we call it. That's my 25 warning there. 20, yeah, it is, yeah. 30. And there's your, there's your platform. I thought I had brakes in. <laughs> yeah, with the old brakes, this just would have stopped pretty much dead. It, it, would have, it would have stopped perfectly, yeah. But you're going to stop where we stop at 387, that's fine. <laughs> there's, another set of de there's another set of cameras where the, uh, where the four platform marker is in, in real life. Come on, stop. But, uh, <laughs> It will stop. <laughs> it's on the platform. That's all that matters. <laughs> That's all that matters. There's a static 1972 stock at Ealing Broadway. Uh, free cam. So there is. I've never noticed that before. I've never noticed that before either. That's pretty cool. I always have great fun racing the uh, the underground trains off of Ealing Broadway. They probably get away a bit quicker than you, but I just imagine they don't keep, yeah. they don't keep the speed. No, no, they 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 can't keep up with us. If 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 we're full power in the three eight seven off uh, off Ealing Broadway, they they they're left behind us. They we just can, disappear. In a uh, when we do the railhead treatment trains, you have two class sixty sixes and two wagons. Um, the 66s are not in multiple, so you've only got one locomotive powering. But leaving Gatwick, you have a 700 alongside you, and you'll you'll keep up with it up to 60. It's yeah, quite, it's quite nice, especially when you're alongside the driving cab, and you sort of suddenly see them looking at you through their tinted windows. <laughs> they don't wave very often, those uh, those 700 drivers. Oh, unsociable. I, I think it's just a great. I think it's just a great Western thing because I I often wave at some of the. Uh, the, the SWR ones between uh, Ash and uh, Guildford, and they, they just seem to resolutely ignore me. Uh, we're, we're, so I've, I've got to win. We're a gem. Freight, freight's a generally friendly bunch. I mean, there's a bit of uh, animosity between certain companies on the freight side of things. Um, I'm not waving at you because your locomotive's the wrong colour, sort of thing. Um, generally speaking. Like being cross rail then. <laughs> <laughs> generally speaking, everyone's pretty friendly. Yeah, we've right, um, yeah. so yeah, I've never found the southwestern drivers too bad. They normally wave back. Uh, maybe I'm not looking in the right place, <laughs> <laughs> or, I've, or I've just always come across the same miserable ones. <laughs> I don't think the Acton Dive Under is simulated on this, so you'll go straight on. Um, pretty much everything goes through the Acton Dive Under. Don't know why. Um, they just always seem to give us a junction two. Junction one is one that we never want to see, but you probably do want to see on freight because that puts you into the yard. Yes, it puts you into um, reception one, and you can't get out the other side back over onto the main line. Um, no, it's relief only, isn't it? And I can never remember what that junction's called, but it's rough as hell for a three eight seven, especially if you're doing eighty at that point. Those buffer stops there are interesting. There's a sign just before you reach the buffer stops in Acton Yard that says, warning, buffer stops 60 metres ahead. Um, you, you just think, is that the most pointless sign ever? Ah, uh, but is it CPWS fitted? Uh, no. Because that might be why the sign's there. No, it's five miles an hour. 
<laughs> just, just point in, the sign then. <laughs> just in case you can't see the buffer stops. I'm pretty sure they're lit up red. Or are they white there? I d actually, I don't think they're illuminated because they're quite close to the main line, so I, I possibly they're not illuminated. Uh, okay. You're still good for 80. Um, you'll get a magnet for a, a 50 mile an hour PSR. Um, uh, one, two, three, four signals ahead. So not this one, not the next one, not the one after that, but the one after that. <laughs> if my route knowledge is correct. <laughs> you don't want to be taking the junction indicator there because that'll take you onto the um, up poplar. Yes, and you don't want to take a junction indicator at this next signal either because that bit of line has been lifted. That's the oh, old, that old oak common reception line. It's crazy to think you've come all the way from Reading on one signal box, but if I was on the up Poplar line, I would have a signal box to take me, Thames Valley to take me out of Acton Yard. I'd get around the corner, literally one signal around that corner, I'm under um, Acton Wales signaller. Um, he will take me through one signal section, and then I'll be on Acton Canal Wharf signaller. <laughs> and then, then you're on the Dudding Hill line. And then you'll has... get the magnet for the 50. Oh, sorry, well, I think my... my... Internet's died a bit there. 50. Yeah, you get, yeah. It's after, after this signal, you'll get the magnet to 50. And that's where you start braking for the 50 in step one, because there's loads of TPWS around here. So we always say kill it first and uh, and then just trundle. Yeah, that's, that's always a good plan. Northwest Transport in the thumbnail says 165 instead of 166. It's bugging me. I think we are in a 165. Are we? Uh, it's 166 you're in. Ah. So what's a 165? Did I just make that up? Uh, no, uh, visually they're identical. Um, apart from it hasn't got carpet throughout it. And it hasn't got factory fitted air conditioning and is missing a toilet. But apart from that, they are identical trains. So I know Unless the... it's a 1650 and then it can only go 75. So I know with the, the 465s, 465s a 4 car and a 466 is a 2 car. Mm. So I, I assumed it was going to be the same with the, the diesel turbos. No, 1651s one, 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 um, can be 2 or 3 cars, depending on the, the fleet number of it. 166s um, are all 3 car from the factory. But the 166s were designed to be a, an express version. And they were fitted fully with carpeting. They had factory fitted air conditioning, and they had a small toilet in the third coach. And that's the only differences. They're, they're posh ones. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, posh for turbo. Yeah. Chris Ablett, great video. Thank you, bud. Really appreciate that. Yeah, Northern Prince is definitely a pointless sign. So anywhere after the signal, you can start slowing down to forty. Because uh, at one no, I can't. Uh, Westbourne, Westbourne Park Tube Station is where the forty starts. Get it down nice and early. Yeah, that's what we do. We we just, just roll it in because you're you're generally always waiting for something to come out of Paddington before you can go in anyway. So there's there's never any point rushing up to this. Again, you you would just Especially, be yellow signals all the way through here, wouldn't you, in real life? Uh, no, no, it's it's quite rare. You you, you might pick a single yellow up here at uh, at Westbourne Park. And the um, the lines off to the left of the now the new crossrail oh, okay. uh, lines. This, this and actually, the line you're, the line you're on at the moment doesn't exist anymore because it's it's now only for the um, the eastbound uh, tunnel line. Everything gets routed over onto the the line to your right there, which is track five. Um, it does drop down to thirty after this signal. We have a green, so you are into Paddington. Green on six. Nitrack said uh, said small toilet is always locked out of use now due to lack of parts. Yeah, yeah, I can believe that because they, <laughs> they, they were built in the '90s and they they just generally didn't work. So your next signal will always be a single yellow, unless your previous one was a yellow, and then this will be a red. But it will always be a single yellow here because this is the last signal into Paddington. So would you not get double yellow on the one before? Or is this three aspect coming? No, it's three aspect signalling here. Oh, that's quite rare on the approach to a large terminus. Yeah, they're they're only one signal. They've gone to those LED type ones, so there's only one signal, there's only one um, filament on it. Platform 14. Platform 14. Doors are on the right. Now. 
So anywhere past the Laddis Bridge, you can slow down to 25, because there's 25 into platforms 11 to 14. 25. And One. then at the turnout for platform 14, you can slow down to 15, because 15 is great for going into turnless platforms. It is indeed. One Dan and his boat, great username. Quick question, what is the point of the track lights on the later class 377s and 387s? Do they really make any difference to night driving? I think it means the debris lights on the front. Yeah, they're, they're debris lights. So, um, yeah, they, they pick up the rubbish for the, the CCTV camera that Network Rail can access. I don't know how long platform 14 is in this game. <laughs> As long as your your eight is great at the at the uh, TPWS, but I think you're stopping halfway down it anyway by the uh, looks of your graphics. Yeah, there's the TPWS loops. Um, whether they would actually work or not, I don't know. But I'll, I'll I'll make sure I'm doing under ten just in case. Eight is great. Nine is fine. Seven is heaven. Apparently. That's the only time you can reset and go is if you have an activation going towards buffer stops. It is, on a terminus platform. All stopped. Okay, let's do it properly. Step three. DRA. DRA. Neutral. Doors are right. Doors are right. Um, getting up out the seat is good practice. Is that something you do, or do you stay in the seat on offside doors? No, I, I, I have my fingers ready for it with my right hand. So I keep my keep my left hand on the the power controller, and the the right hand my fingers because there's it, quite a gap between the door release buttons. So it's not like a three eight seven where you can just jab them with two fingers. You, yeah. You've really got to you you're doing sort of a, a reverse Spiderman sort of thing. And um, yeah, they're, they're they're waiting just in case you know just just ready for it. And the the, the yellow box there that you see on the platform is uh, is where you should line your cab door up with. So yeah, you're good. That's uh, that's not bad then. It's not bad. No. No, 387, we have to go right up to the blocks because uh, eight cars only just fit on yeah. uh, platform 14. But no, that's that's good. That's understandable. Um, right, okay, Duck Hunter, you are the third one on my screen. Let's play Locomotive Delivery Location. We have number 10. Got you 10 seconds. Definitely a train. Definitely a train. No trams this time. <laughs> That was definitely um, definitely stretching the uh, stretching the limits of the game, the parameters, moving the goalposts. <laughs> British A says, "Whereabouts does Sam sign?" Are you are you at liberty to say, Sam? Uh, uh, yeah, I don't mind. I sign from Paddington to Oxford. Or well, well, Didcot really. Uh, Oxford. I will be route learning shortly. Um, I go down to Bedwin. And I do Basingstoke, I do the Thames Valley branch lines, which are the Henleys, the Marlows, and the Windsor, and also the North Downs. It's a fair bit of route knowledge for, for a passenger driver. You've got a lot of variety it's, there. It's a fair bit. Uh, once I've got Oxford back on my route card, that is everything that the depot signs. That's because we, we kind of have crossovers in our route knowledge. Um, I, th I think I can possibly bump into you at Basingstoke. You go into the bay platform and I come trundling past. Yes, um, yeah. Acton Yard and then obviously Red Hill or Rygate should be um, down to yeah. Gatwick. I always have a look out when I'm, when I'm going from uh, Rygate down to Gatwick. Uh, <laughs> nor normally trying to thrash a turbo to get it up to 90. Um, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> welcome, um, username I can't pronounce to Dadrail. <laughs> You're very welcome here. <laughs> Oh, South East Rail Productions, Scott Guardsman at Carlisle. Uh, Bowen Potato, do you just like doing a bit of variety, Sam? A, a bit of variety is always good. I mean, it gets very boring if you're on the same route for five or six days on the trot, especially when you get the same diagram number as well. You, you sort of generally end up learning the route off by heart and not, not really referring much to your schedule card. But uh, a bit of variety is always fun, although at the moment I seem to be permanently stuck on the North Downs, which I was told would happen because you've signed the North Downs and not many people do. Um, so, we, yeah, but I, it's 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 still that sort of honeymoon period with it where I still actually really like going down there because it's been such a long time since I was a trainee. I mean, it was four years ago that I was training. 
and um, we used to drive down there all the time just because my my DI, um, that's that's what he did all the time. Yeah, um, we, we, so it, sorry, we we have a similar situation with our Southampton services. There's not there's only a few people that sign it, so you tend to get stuck on those. I've just had a week on those, and it's it's over eight hours in the seat each shift, and it's it's a long week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To say the least, to say the least. Right, Although, we... I was, sorry. No, no, you carry on. Yeah, I was, I was supposed to be on the uh, on the last Gatwick every day this week from Friday. Um, however, due to a pre-booked holiday, I've managed to wangle myself out of that. <laughs> oh, good luck. <laughs> Which means no, no, no Red Hills, uh, no Red Hill sidings and no Red Hill mess room for four hours every night. The, si- the sidings at Gatwick are quite nice, though. Yeah, they are. Yeah, especially for us because uh, our cab is literally under the flight path when we change ends. It's yeah. We've I've done a couple of ballast jobs there right on the flight flight path, and it's always it's always very nice. Unfortunately, yeah. it was during the pandemic, so there wasn't much moving. But it's always it wasn't always much fun. going on. <laughs> there we go. Right, we got a silver medal. I think that's because. Um, oh, is that it? I think that's because we were just late more than anything. Uh. Um, oh, you know you said about London Paddington. I've got to show you this on the screen. I don't know if you can see it on your screen. London Paddington stop accuracy zero point three seven one yards. I still got a silver medal. No, I think, yeah, we were like five, six late coming into Paddington, so I should imagine that's the uh, that's the main cause. Perfectly normal for a turbo of the silver medal. Absolutely. Of the yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Let's have a reveal. Locomotive livery location. We are going to press. There's a few people that have got this right already, so um, I know we've only done three squares, but we'll press the winner button. Thank you very much, Daniel's Trains UK official 46115 Scots Guardsman at Carlisle. I think everyone got Carlisle after the first uh, the first reveal, so that is absolutely brilliant. And if you want to send me any pictures for locomotive location delivery, guys, you can do. Um, you can send them to me on Discord. There's an invitation link in the description below. Or you can send them on my socials, which are on the screen right now. Um, Does your guest have a channel, says Mr. Quicko Gaming. Do you have a channel, Sam? Uh, I do, but there's not really a great deal on it at the moment um, because I've I've sort of had a clear out of stuff that that was a bit pointless. Uh, but yes, I do. Um, quite what it is, I have no idea because YouTube's all a bit new to me. <laughs> plug, plug, <laughs> plug, <laughs> plug. Yes, plug. Apparently, I joined in 2014, but I have no idea what my channel's called. Oh, it's okay. just my name, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if, yeah. if you guys want to hear more from Sam or you have any questions for him then um, Sam like I said is community manager um, in the Discord server invitation link and Sam also keeps a diary in the um, Discord server who, which he's very active in just sort of posting bits and bobs about the daily life of a passenger train driver going backwards and forwards um, which is always quite interesting to read so yeah there we go um, thank you very much for imparting your, your wisdom tonight Sam it's been very much appreciated no problem. Any time. It's always I'm, good fun. I'm hungry and I can't be bothered to cook, so that means I'm going to get something fattening. And I've got a bottle of wine in the fridge, which is now going to get opened. So I, I've just finished a beer, so I might have to go and get another one. Ah, ah, right. Okay, that explains a lot. Yeah, that explains the silver medal. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, th- thanks very much for joining us tonight, Sam, and um, have a great holiday. Thank you very much. Until the next time, I will catch you on. Indeed, indeed. And thank you everybody to um, thank you everybody in the chat. It's been a really busy stream tonight, but hopefully we've kept up with the chat quite nicely. Don't forget, it would be great to see you over in the Discord server. We've made lots of changes in there. It's a nice, friendly, happy place at the moment. Hopefully it'll stay like that. <laughs> and if you've got any pictures... Fingers for, crossed. Fingers crossed. And if you have any pictures for locomotive delivery locations, send them over to me on socials. Um, or follow me on my socials as well. That would be absolutely brilliant. British Ace is in the chat as well. The British Ace, go and check his YouTube channel. He does some really, really good content. So if you haven't already, subscribe to him as well. Um, And yeah, this is the point of the stream where I start rabbiting because I have no idea what to say. So instead of do that, I'm going to press the button that says end. The music should start. The screen should go off. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. That is very important. Is it going to work? Well, there we go. (laughs) Thanks for watching.